I'm Tina Bathinia and welcome to Subway Smorgasbord, where we'll take you on a delicious trip around New York City. Now, I just got off the R train here in Brooklyn. And let me tell you something, many of us know you don't have to leave New York City to travel the world. And one way to learn about another culture is through their food. And they're doing just that right here at Smorgasburg, where they're serving up a global culinary extravaganza where locals get the taste of a variety of cuisines. I'll tell you more about that later in the show, but our first stop is the Lower East Side, where Tony Guida samples the fare at a famous deli and separates fact from fiction when it comes to so-called Jewish food. In the ethnic stew that is New York, it's a given that the city's cuisine reflects a menu of the traditions and tastes of the city's immigrants, especially true when it comes to what's known as Jewish food. Hey, you're not supposed to eat pickles. It's high sodium. I'll spit out the sodium. A pickle. A bagel with lox, a pastrami sandwich, foods that we routinely call Jewish are really not Jewish at all. Quote, Jewish foods have no Jewish origin, so there's nothing religious about them, there's nothing ritualistic about them. Dr. Jennifer Berg is a food historian and director of the graduate program in food studies at NYU. These are foods that, you know, predominantly Eastern European Jews brought over during that rough period of mass migration, 1880, 1920. So these are just the foods that they were accustomed to eating and they ate them here. And once they started selling them, they become branded. Some of those foods begat commercial brands that are iconic in New York. Yona Schimmel selling gut-busting knishes from this store for 114 years. Russ and Daughters, purveyors of smoked fish, caviar, and specialty foods since Woodrow Wilson was president. It's not by accident that both stores are on East Houston Street. Jews arriving from Poland, Hungary, Romania, Czechoslovakia, and Russia built their New World ghetto on New York's Lower East Side. We're at Katz's. This is kind of like a beacon of old New York Jewish culture. And nobody wants to see a petite pastrami sandwich here. No. I mean, that is, the, that is why they're coming. They want to, like, come, eat, conquer. We only have about 300 kosher restaurants in New York because... Mitchell Moss joined me at Katz's, never kosher, by the way, to observe that Jewish food, like all cuisines, can create a cultural bouillabaisse. In, in New York, there, there are only two areas where all ethnic groups merge. On the baseball diamond and in restaurants. Food brings people together. It's a unifying element in the city because when you go out to eat, that's the way you learn about other cultures. The food on this table is heavy on meat and dough and generously spiced with onion and garlic and salt. Humble, like the people who brought it here. So here we have a plate of pickles, very traditional, and a nice petite portion of chopped liver with egg and schmaltz, which is chicken fat drizzled in, gives it the creaminess. And we've got big matzo ball. We have a knish, looks like that one is stuffed with potato, which is the most traditional. And, and of course, the piece de resistance uh, pastrami sandwich on rye. You can eat more sophisticated food, no doubt, but it's hard to top this for lip-smacking taste. And a chocolate egg cream. For CUNY TV, I'm Tony Geiger. The next stop on your culinary passport is Eastern Europe. The food, whether it's Russian, Romanian, or Ukrainian, is alive and well in New York City. Lisa Beth Kovitz guides us through our very own Borscht Belt. Eastern Europe is a culturally ethnically and economically diverse mass of countries. And when those immigrants arrived in America, they brought with them an equally diverse smorgasbord of culinary flavors. But in New York City, one thing many Eastern European restaurants have in common is drama. Here on Brighton Beach, there are lots of great Russian restaurants that offer a traditional dinner and show experience. We had a chance to sit down and talk to the owner of one of them. I asked her what she thought was the key to this restaurant's success the location. Where can you see beauty like you'd see it now? And good food, music, you can dance, and you can see the show. The show at Tatiana's is sumptuous. One act after another keeps the drama going, and in between, the floor is open for dancing. Dinner is served family style. Come hungry, Tatiana's three-course meal is made up of about 25 different dishes from all over the world. 
Dancing and drinking and eating, in the best of Russian tradition, goes on late into the night. Meanwhile, over in Manhattan, you can enjoy a very different kind of drama. Sammy's Romanian, with its fluorescent lighting and drop ceiling, has been feeding and entertaining people for nearly 40 years. A little fresh frozen vodka? The story goes that the current owner of Sammy's won the steakhouse in a poker game off a guy named Sammy. 100%. It was won in 1975. How long have you been here? Too many years. You don't want to know. The show at Sammy's comes right up to your table. Are we ready? Yep. So we're going to take some white radish, fried onions, and grivenous. A little Jewish olive oil. Oh, you're going to love it. After this, you won't be able to eat it anymore except from here. Like all of the Eastern European restaurants we visited, Sammy's has a huge and varied menu, but their specialty is steak. And then suddenly, in the middle of your meal, this happens. Because at Sammy's, you are part of the show. Be prepared to be invited out of your seats by Danny Love, who, for the past 16 years, has been the one-man all-around entertainment system at Sammy's. The meal finished off with a grand New York City tradition, the egg cream, served with a dramatic Sammy's flair. And then there's Veselka. There's no floor show at Veselka, but their devotion to good Ukrainian food is epic. They're open 24-7, and with 160 items on their menu, most made from scratch, it's hard to imagine how all that food comes out of this little kitchen. Well, it doesn't. So this is the secret kitchen beneath the Selka. Uh, most of our customers never get to see this operation. Now behind me, we're making meat stuffed cabbage. Wow. We make this five times a week, in very large quantities. We also make a meatless version. Everything's made by hand. The Selka has held tight to those traditions since 1954. And some of the cooks at Veselka have spent decades perfecting their skills. This, this is Pani Malgosha. She's been here for 30 plus years making borscht, and she is the absolute world's best. Veselka sells between 60 and 90 gallons of borscht a week. How have you kept up this pace for 60 years? I think our main reason for success is we always use good quality, the best quality ingredients that we can find and uh, keep everything fresh. I think that, that that's the secret. What do you think this big smorgasbord of immigrant food has meant to New York City? Uh, I think it's great. As you know, most New Yorkers do not cook at home. So it provides the residents, the citizens of New York, like you said, a vast smorgasbord of really authentic, usually inexpensive, freshly prepared ethnic food. From the Lower East Side of Manhattan, this has been Lisa Beth Kovetz for CUNY TV. That's it. Good. <laughs> Whether it's marinara or mozzarella, if you eat Italian along Arthur Avenue, you can be sure it's authentic. Andrew Falzone reports. At 85 years old, Mike Greco still gets up every morning to work behind the counter and make fresh mozzarella at his deli on Arthur Avenue in the Belmont section of the Bronx. Near the Bronx Zoo and Bronx Botanical Garden, the deli sits inside the Arthur Avenue retail market. Whether it's raw ingredients or a prepared meal, the market brings it all under one roof, and after being there for more than 65 years, Mike Greco has seen it all. I come from Italy in 1947. And when I learned on Arthur Avenue, and on Arthur Avenue, I remain all my life. It was uh, something is very nice. And then I come inside this place away, and I work for somebody away for um, 15 years. After 15 years, I take over. And I remain there with me, my son. Uh, I make a... Uh, Nice living. The other day I see a guy come and say hello to me, 97 years old. Wow. Hey, you still over here? Yeah, I'm still over here. Me right now, I'm the oldest guy inside this mark. So my father at 85, coming here every day is really him staying alive. He has an incredible energy to observe the business. He sees things that people don't see. 
Mike's son Dave runs the day-to-day -day operations of the deli and oversees all of the food prep. He's an internationally acclaimed expert on Italian cuisine and prides himself on having provided generations of customers with meals that offer the highest quality, authentic Italian ingredients. If you want to shop, that word cheap, don't come here. You want quality, you want service, that's what we do. There's all clubs around that people think they're buying the same product. It's impossible. Everywhere you look at the deli, there's something to see and something to eat. Cold cuts, salads, and sandwiches line the shelves and display cases. Many of the items are imported directly from Italy, and most of what's not is made from scratch right behind the counter, like their world-class mozzarella. Bronx water is what makes it so good. The water becomes milk. This cooking process in Italian is called cotto. We're cooking the curd. You take your curd and recook it, the milk, and you get ricotta. Not ricotta like they say upstate New York. Ricotta. Nice and fresh. The menu at Mike's is a mile long with special sandwiches paying tribute to celebrities who have some special connection to the deli. But the deli's specialty is mozzarella that comes out fresh hourly. We had a chance to try one of Mike's favorite varieties. Bocconcino del Cardenal, small little piece of mozzarella. They come individual, uh -huh. individual. Sure, you understand? It's a, that's a bocconcino. Everyone, even. It's amazing. While Mike may be the king of mozzarella, Dave has established himself as well, having appeared on nearly every major Food Network show and on The Chew. But perhaps his crowning on-camera achievement was his appearance on Throw Down with Bobby Flay, where a blind taste test revealed Dave's eggplant parmesan was better than the master chef's. I didn't even hesitate. I, 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 there was no way. And once I tasted Bobby's, it tasted all like skin. <laughs> I break his chops still. <laughs> The deli also has an impressive celebrity clientele. Some have stopped by on the campaign trail, and others are regulars, like Robert De Niro, who received this cake from the deli as a birthday gift. It was made entirely of mozzarella. Bob's one of the special ones. He's been buying mozzarella since the movie Awakenings. Dave encourages all of his customers to explore beyond the Arthur Avenue retail market. If you're looking for a good restaurant, here are some of Dave's personal favorites. Amelia's restaurant offers traditional Sicilian food. Dave recommends you try any dish that includes pasta or meatballs. At Rigoletto's, you'll find traditional Napolitan dishes that include eggplant rollatini and an amazing veal chop. Dominic started as a bar, but is now a family-style restaurant known for its Calabrese style of cooking. This no-frills establishment offers wine in two varieties, red or white. Mario's restaurant has been serving Napolitan on Arthur Avenue for over 90 years. Dave says you can't go wrong here, but swears their pizza is the best in all of New York City. Whichever restaurant you visit, Dave knows why after all these years, Arthur Avenue has survived. I think it's the whole experience of the market, Arthur Avenue, the strip, but I know we make a, a strong impression to say you're in the real Little Italy, because it means a lot to us. Another great Italian tradition is family-style dining, but it looks like I've got this plate of antipasto all to myself, so I've got some eating to do. I'm Andrew Falzone for CUNY TV. If you can't find your way to Mykonos or Santorini anytime soon, just hop on the subway to Astoria, Queens, just like our Mike Gilliam did, to get a taste of Greek cuisine. Opa! There's a large Greek population in New York City, and that's very evident in Astoria, Queens. To learn more about its roots here and the neighborhood, we stop by this restaurant on Ditmar's Boulevard. It's called Agnati. Walking into Agnati is like taking a step into Greece. The popular family-owned dining spot has been a mainstay in Astoria for nearly 15 years, serving up traditional food and culture. It's located on Ditmar's, next to Astoria Park. Agnati in Greek means to look into beautiful scenery, so we have Astoria Park and when you're kind of taking it in in almost like a spiritual way. Daughter Faye Lambrianidis handles the day-to-day -day and agreed to give us a look into Greek culture and Astoria through Agnanti's menu. Astoria, I think they say after Australia is the second largest Greek population outside of Greece. Um, it's very interesting because even though 
everyone's from Greece. There's different fractions of Greece. There's the islanders and the the mountain, you know, the mountain regions, the the people that come from Athens. So when we started our restaurant, we wanted to incorporate all that, and that's why we have different sections on the menu. We have a tasting of Constantinople. We have a croquettes from Mykonos. We wanted everyone to feel welcomed here, so we treated it more of a tapas. Unlike some of the other popular restaurants in Astoria, Agnanti is kind of off the beaten path. The walls are lined with the pictures of Greek movie stars and decorative pieces that look as though they come from the old country. Is the idea really to kind of make this a kind of a respite for, for Greeks who are in New York? Exactly. But the neighborhood has been changing, with many Greek residents moving out and the flow of immigrants slowing. But the Greek financial crisis may be changing things. With the Greek crisis, we're starting to get that new wave of migration. And a lot of people um, come to Astoria because it's still the hub. It's not what it used to be, but it's still a strong you know, hub. What anchors that hub? Is it the restaurants? Is it the church? I think what brings Astoria and what keeps it the hub is definitely the food experience. You definitely have the restaurants here, a lot of churches, and a lot of um, silogi, we call them in Greek, social clubs. Faye grew up in Astoria. It has changed. It's nice to reminisce about it because there was, it was very Greek. My father has been here for 40 years, does not speak English, but he managed to prosper enough and, you know, to build a family here because it was, it was everyone spoke Greek. Now it's different. So if the food is part of the glue that holds the community together, what better place to sample it than Agnani? And what a spread, everything from spinach pie and grilled octopus to lamb and lemon sauce. Spinach pie, simply excellent. It's good. <laughs> As our second dish, this is um, tacos, and it comes from the island of Crete. And they use this rusk, which is this right here. And it's almost like a, I call it a Greek bruschetta. I'm a little dry. Here. I know, so am I. So, we want to try our malamatina. Yeah. Okay. This is an acquired taste, I say. Uh -huh. It's a Greek wine made out of pine resin, and it's one of the few wines that you could drink with uh, Coca-Cola. They literally put Coca-Cola in with their wine. Really? So we're not doing high-end French here. This is really Greek. <laughs> okay. Siniyasu. Cheers. Cheers. So we decided to do a little cooking. We're starting with our shrimp that we have floured. Then we're gonna throw in some Greek wine because you can't go wrong with some wine. But the wine is a good the thing. Wine's always a good thing. Some cheese. Can't okay. go wrong with cheese. Love the cheese. <laughs> a little garlic. And now we're throwing in some peppers, some scallions. And the last that we're gonna put in, our last ingredient will be the cheese, so it won't melt too much. Okay. Then you get this beautiful sauce. Wow, that looks good. Mm -hmm. I think I think we should try that. I think I think it's about time. Okay. Yeah. Delicious. It's good? good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Remember we talked about the new wave of immigrants coming from Greece to Astoria. 22-year-old waiter, Demetrius Villatinoas, is part of a new wave of Greek immigrants, and now he's working at the restaurant. The first time I came here, um, came to visit Astoria to see how it is. And you could actually see people on the street and hear them talking Greek. So you reach a point that you're not sure if you actually left Greece and came to a different place. Because, you know, you think you moved to a different country, but you still hear your own language. But I guess the main thing is the fact that you can find culture here that you're accustomed to. Yes. Like food, drinks, anything you need. So if you're interested in sampling Greek cuisine and learning more about the culture, try Astoria, Queens, especially Ditmars Boulevard. I'm Mike Gilliam for CUNY TV. Seems like you can't turn a corner in New York City without running into Caribbean food. Magalie Laguerre Wilkinson gives us a taste of the West Indies. Lakai Restaurant is located in Fort Greene, Brooklyn, directly across the street from the Brooklyn Academy of Music. It offers some of the best New York City has to offer in authentic Haitian cuisine. For, for people who don't know who are watching, what does Lakai mean? Why did you want to call it Lakai Restaurant? Okay, Lakai exactly means Home, yes. we like our home. Everybody's welcome. We just a big family. We welcome everybody. What are some of the notable Lakai dishes? 
the special one is have to I have to go with the conch. Yeah. The conch a lot of people will be selling it. It sounds like it's a hit. It's a hit. So the lumbi is a hit. The lumbi is a hit. Um, the lumbi and creole. The lumbi yeah. creole is a yeah. hit. Yeah. The, the grill one is a hit. Um, a slider is a hit. It's like every dish. Every is version of conch is a hit. Every every version. Yeah. Of items we have on the menu. Mm -hmm. We make sure it comes ahead for everybody when they come here. They enjoy it. Usually, throughout the Caribbean, the the common the common trait is rice, but different versions of it. Mm -hmm. In Haiti, obviously, the rice and beans, but there's also John John rice, the black rice. Yes. So explain a little bit the black rice. The black rice is um, it's a mixture of mushroom. It's a it's a it's a black mushroom, which is um, end of the mushroom that's oxidized. It's like it come, the the color comes naturally. And the flavor, it's amazing. Yeah. When, you, when you taste it, it's like, wow. It's red snapper, which is braised mm -hmm. in our tomato sauce. Yeah. So we could use for, to give um, the, the fish the flavor. We usually get the flavor of the fish, because it's a burning fish. Because mm -hmm. the flavor comes out um, the bones. Wow. And when you steam it, you get all the flavor. And I know Haitians like the spice. Let me try this. Dream. Thank you. Okay, let's see how good your lambi is. So this is the grilled conch, right? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Our next stop is Tina's Cuban Restaurant on Madison Avenue near 34th Street, which serves an eager midtown lunch crowd every day of the week. So the place is packed here during lunchtime. Yeah, it's crazy. And is it which 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 of the ones here uh, sell out quickest? I would uh, imagine like it's the roast pork. Like when we start, when we just opened this place, there yeah. were only two trays. Yeah. Now we have to make seven trays. Seven trays, seven trays of trays roast pork. My goodness. And then the short of it, incredible. Okay, so here we have here the famous Cuban sandwich. Cuban sandwich. Yeah, yeah, one of the one what? of the dishes that can be missed. We we hear about Cuban sandwich all the time. What are the components here that make this so special? Well, the roast pork, which is the main one. The yeah. ham. Uh, pickles, mayo, mustard, and the Swiss cheese. What makes this all unique? I know the main, the common denominator is rice. Rice. Yeah, the rice, usually the white rice or the yellow rice. Yeah. You know, some people don't like the like traditional just white rice. Right. Most of people go for the mixed rice and beans that right. we have here. Or the yellow rice. Also, I see we have the tostones. The fried green plantains, yeah, the, the fried green uh, plantains. Mm -hmm. Tostones, everybody. Sometimes people don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> but they still want to get it. They but you it. know what they mean when yeah. they say it. Mm -hmm. And this is like, you know, when you when you walk in here, I mean, it, it's like going back. It's like going back in yeah. time. You're in Cuba. Right? A lot of people say, you know, I can't eat the roast pork like my mom used to make it. So that's why I come to they this come place. They come here. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Great. Great. And for our last stop, we went down to the financial district at the corner of Broad and Beaver Streets, where Cynthia Hossein parks her wildly popular food truck, Nayo's Trinidadian Roti Truck. Yeah, this is a family business. Um, my family is really, really hardworking, and um, we started from the ground up. We've been here for years. Well, when I purchased the truck, I, I decided to design the truck just like my dad's truck, so that it will have that recognition. Customers will recognize who we are and what we sell because we've been in business for so long. The most popular item on their menu is the boneless chicken roti and it's easy to see why. The roti is a traditional Trinidadian dish. It's either rice and peas or roti, which is like a thin flatbread. And um, it's served with uh, potato, chana, and any kind of curry or vegetables. The curry chicken, curry beef, curry goat curry shrimp. The curry goat is really good. That's my favorite. We have a restaurant, which is also a bakery, and um, we cook everything fresh every day, early in the morning, and um, everything is loaded onto the truck, and we're on our way. We cross the bridge, and we're here. You want it spicy? No. Not spicy. A lot of people come from the West Indies, and they love it. They, they, they're excited when they see the truck. They're really happy that um, we could bring Trinidad cuisine over here. The food is great, you know, she, ch she changes the variety and it gives you something different in Manhattan to, you know, to eat from a West Indian perspective. It's home away from home. From the roast pork of Cuba to the grilled conch of Haiti to the roti from Trinidad, Caribbean food is now part of the culinary fabric of New York City. 
Thanks for taking this tour with me of some of the flavors of the West Indies. I'm Magalie Laguerre Wilkinson for CUNY TV. We've reached our final stop on this culinary trip, and it's right here at Smorgasburg, an international foodie paradise. You walk like, I don't know, 15 feet, and you've already been in like three different countries, right? I love it. I love eating. Since 2011, locals and visitors alike have been flocking to the Brooklyn waterfront for Smorgasburg. The different tastes and the cultures and stuff is really fun. It's cool. You know, again, we're really selective about what we bring in here. It's not just uh, crepes or, or things that you can kind of find anywhere on a street in a street fair in New York. I'm here every weekend and I could eat something different every single week and not have the same thing from our market. It's, it's spanning the globe within one amazing culinary borough. It's pretty impressive. It's a great food venue. Uh, any foodie, I think, would do well here. Every weekend in Williamsburg or Brooklyn Bridge Park, 100 vendors serve up all types of food and drink. I've been in the restaurant business most of my life, but it's a different sort of a venue where you, you get to meet people face to face. I have a restaurant, an Ethiopian restaurant in Bushwick, so for me it's like a good way to introduce people to the, to the food and get them to come to the restaurant and actually experience the full gambit of it. You can come here and try food from everywhere and you know, our blend is really a mix of Japanese food and American food. People are doing stuff from all around the world here and it, it is awesome. Whether it's Japanese fusion or Bolivian cuisine, Smorgasburg is open rain or shine, and in the winter months, you'll find the vendors indoors in Crown Heights, so foodies can get their cultural fix all year long. It's awesome. It's great. Look, look what's not awesome about that? It, these are really good fries. Yeah? Yeah. Best fries you ever had? Yeah. That's our show for today. For more information on any of our stories, log on to our website at cuny.tv. I'm Tina Beth Pina for Subway Smorgasbord. Happy eating!